Okay, so I think that's most people um, logged on. Uh, so welcome to everyone to today's webinar on how international relocations are still moving without needing to cross the border, brought to you by Oliver James Associates. Our presenters today are Laura Sharkey and Harriet Jenkins, who are providing you with an insight into their experiences of the current international relocations climate. So Laura Sharkey has been with Oliver James for almost three years and has recently been promoted to principal consultant. Working from our Manchester office, Laura works within the actuarial market and has a wealth of experience across a broad spectrum of international markets, making her perfectly placed to talk through today's topic. Our second presenter, Harriet Jenkins, is an associate director in our Singapore office and her experiences enable her to give an in-depth insight into how companies and individuals are overcoming the current challenges being presented to international relocations. I'm Stephanie Thies and um, I'm joined today by Matt, Matt Gale and we'll be hosting and facilitating this webinar for you today. Today we'll be um, answering four questions. How are international job markets reacting to COVID-19? What are creative solutions? What creative solutions are businesses introducing to overcome the current tra travel restrictions? What does the future hold for international relocations? And what are the benefits for an international role in your career? There will be an allocated Q&A at the end of the session, but feel free to use the chat tool as we go to submit your questions or to tell us about any technical problems you may experience during the recording, especially as we all know how unpredictable the virtual world can sometimes be. But for now, let's begin our webinar. Harriet, um, you'll be starting off the discussion about how international markets are being affected by COVID-19, so I'll hand things over to you. Thanks, Steph. There have been many unprecedented challenges across international markets due to the worldwide increase on travel restrictions to help combat COVID-19. Not only are we seeing candidates worried about the security of international roles, but we're also seeing many businesses fear that their headcounts will disappear if roles are not filled, which in turn could result in them losing their 2021 budget. As a result, we are seeing clients working above and beyond to try and fill these positions, with many going the extra mile to secure the right person and are more willing to wait for the right candidate to start. Yeah, so I've also had similar experiences across the international markets. For instance, I'm currently recruiting in New Zealand on a permanent contract basis, and their needs have been unaffected by the current climate. There are gaps in the team and they need them filling. And this is similar across all markets. Businesses are still recruiting for international talent, and they are mainly doing so where their, where their roles have been deemed as business critical. It's also worth mentioning that those businesses who are currently recruiting have recruited international talent before and are therefore used to a remote interviewing process. The only real challenge and change that we're seeing is the introduction of a remote onboarding process. Thank you, Laura. It's Matt here. So, you both touch upon businesses working above and beyond to secure international talent. But what are the ways that they're doing this? What are some of the ways that are and the techniques that you're seeing? So businesses are adapting and forming creative solutions when it comes to interviewing and drawing up contracts. Um, they're also committing heavily to remote onboarding and are couriering laptops to their new starters to enable onboarding to happen on home soil. Additionally, we're seeing businesses offer up second screens um, and office chairs in some cases to anyone who needs them to enable people to be effectively set up to work from home, both of which, as you can imagine, are being very well received by our candidates. And as mentioned, those businesses who are used to hiring international talent are no stranger to undertaking remote recruitment processes. So as far as interview processes go, they really haven't changed at all. However, what has inevitably changed is the onboarding process for international roles, as mentioned earlier. Now, for some, new joiners can start a role by accessing their work remotely, with the view, of course, to relocating when lockdown's over. And then there are also some businesses who might not be able to start somebody remotely, but will still interview now and simply offer the successful candidate a role with a to-be-confirmed start date. So for the candidate, this means you can enjoy the rest of your time at home with the knowledge and, and peace of mind that you have a, a new job secured when restrictions are lifted. This is something we've actually seen quite a lot in the Hong Kong markets. So 
if anyone has dreams to move overseas, there's absolutely no reason as to why you shouldn't be applying now. Thank you, Laura. Um, so I think the main question that a lot of people um, are wanting to hear the answer to is how are businesses overcoming the logistics of the current travel restrictions? So I have two clear examples that come to mind. Um, the first is a role that we recently worked on for a Singapore based business. Um, the preferred candidate or candidate uh, was based outside of Singapore and was unable to relocate due to the country's borders being closed. Um, in order to secure the candidate, the business organized for two contracts to be drawn up. One in the country where this particular candidate was based for initial three months with the flexibility to extend if restrictions were enforced longer than expected. And the other outlining the Singapore relocation aspect of the role. Because of this flexibility, we saw candidates begin their initial work period in their home country and be successfully onboarded into the business. The second was a role we recently worked on for a Hong Kong based business. Uh, in this instance, the preferred candidate was based in Canada. Um, they had received their work pass approval, however, uh, were unable to enter Hong Kong due to the borders being closed. Here, the business organized for two contracts to be drawn up, whilst the Hong Kong business entity worked with the Canadian office to enable the candidates to start the role under a secondment label while still on Canadian soil. This meant that the candidate secured the role and was also able to spend more time with their family during this uncertain time. And for our team, international recruitment processes are very much still ongoing. We are mostly seeing businesses either currying out laptops to their new starters or setting them up with remote access on the personal laptops to enable them to be onboarded much more quickly. And candidates will definitely be finding themselves with all sorts of virtual inductions and, and virtual uh, introductory meetings, though, to, to help them get quickly embedded into the team and, of course, also to enable business continuity. Thanks for that, guys. Um, so um, the next question to run through, um, it's simply, what does the future hold for international talent? So once restrictions have been lifted and the freedom of travel returns, I would anticipate an uplift in claims roles, particularly related to business interruption and health and medical, as there'll be a greater activity in these areas. Um, additionally, I would suspect an uplift in roles such as risk, IC security and operations, uh, as the virus has highlighted if businesses are light in these areas. Of course, businesses have been more traditional and reticent towards working from home in the past. However, we are starting to see the tide turn. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think we may actually see a, a rise in remote working across international markets as well. And COVID-19 has literally presented most businesses with no other option than to work remotely. And many are now considering seeing this as the new norm. Businesses have seen the success and the value of having remote international talent. The candidate pool becomes a lot larger and, and ultimately it gives businesses a lot more options. And who is to say that the best person for the job is on your doorstep? Oliver James have been relocating professionals across Europe for over a decade now. And all we've seen over this time is increased opportunity in international markets. Even in my three years, I've seen it grow significantly. So I, suspect, so I expect that this will only continue to grow with this newfound flexibility. So we've heard how businesses can benefit from international talent, um, but what can international talent um, and international role do for your career? Um, look, I think as a candidate, there are many benefits to working in an international role. Um, firstly, you'll become more culturally aware as you assimilate to doing business in different markets where various approaches and different approaches are required. Um, secondly, particularly in Southeast Asia, there is the unique chance to work in developed, so markets like Singapore, developing like Thailand and underdeveloped markets like Cambodia or Laos perhaps, all in one role. Um, and if you're in a regional job scope position, you can take advantage of this. Lastly, international roles are a real opportunity to push yourself out of your comfort zone and can open you up to future leadership roles. International experience can sometimes be a requirement for an international brand looking for senior hires. So it's a great way to, to gather this sort of experience. 
And from a business perspective, there are many reasons why they'd like to hire international talent. Diversity and inclusion is huge for businesses. A lot of companies in financial services are international and naturally have multicultural environments or at least try to encourage them. So businesses like to bring in people with different perspectives and ideas. And international talent can offer this by having experienced similar work in completely different cultures and countries. We've particularly seen people relocate to international hubs, such as Dublin in the UK, not only for the experience, but also to improve their English, for example. Having people with other language skills is another major plus for businesses as it's hugely beneficial in cross-border relationships, which is see, very common in these large organisations. Now, for the individual, this could be their opportunity to um, achieve their ambition to improve their foreign language skills, which is something we've supported a lot by mobilising people's relocations. There are lots of other benefits to the candidate. They can sell back on this experience when either returning to their home country or when exploring alternative relocation opportunities. For instance, actuaries moving abroad are more likely to become familiar with new modelling platforms and local reporting bases, which might not, which may be more uncommon in their home market. International relocations also show courage. They're seen as a real character building exercise. And let's not forget, they also provide people with a pretty great once in a lifetime opportunity, which could always be tied up with plans to go traveling if you take up a contract, for example. What's really exciting is that many of the international businesses that Oliver James work with, particularly in Hong Kong, Singapore, New Zealand and Bermuda, is that they can hire international candidates on day rate contracts as well. So even if a longer term permanent commitment is not attractive to you, you can still go and live abroad for six, 12 months, earn a daily rate and come home after that if you wish. My key advice though, is to make sure you seriously consider the location just as much as the role. Do not just apply for the job, apply for the whole opportunity. For you as a potential candidate, surely you should not be applying to something if you haven't properly considered living there and enthusiasm for the country is a big thing and, and that applies to both parties businesses also want people who will thrive in the organization and their wider environment if two candidates perform equally well in an interview but one shows more genuine enthusiasm and excitement about being there it's a no-brainer on which candidate is going to secure the role All right. Um, so for anyone listening now who are considering current or future international roles, why should they reach out to the team at Oliver James? Um, Harriet, do you want to give your view on this? Sure thing. Um, so the team at Oliver James have a global network and database providing you with an extensive range of opportunities. We've tried and tested experience of re relocating people for international moves, so we're able to support you through every step of your relocation goal. You'll receive end-to-end -end support and service, which I know from previous candidates' experience has been a real help and reassurance in what can be an exciting yet challenging milestone. We now work in more international relocation, international locations than ever, and internally we have experiences supporting actuaries obtaining visas for both permanent and contract roles in places like New Zealand, Canada, South Africa. Southeast Asia and China markets, to name a few. We've also relocated people within Europe from places like Poland, Slovakia, the Netherlands, Germany, Luxembourg, to other areas in Europe, such as Switzerland, Ireland, and the UK. And with this experience, those small things that, that don't seem like a big deal, but really are, such as getting your visa, finding an apartment, understanding the cost of living, we can also walk you through this every step of the way. Thank you, Laura. Um, so how can anyone listening now start their relocation journey with Oliver James? Well, you can reach out to myself or one of the team via email, phone, LinkedIn or WhatsApp, uh, and we can arrange a one-on-one -on -one consultation to discuss your particular requirements. Yeah, it's as simple as that. The best thing to do is simply get in touch. We're still here working business as usual, so please do not hesitate to get in contact if you have any questions or would like any further advice for future roles, even if it's not something that you're considering right away. Thank you very much, guys. So there's um, there's a question that's come up a couple of times that um, I'd like to to put to the floor. Um, 
Is it just travel restrictions we're looking at or are there visa issues to take into account as well? Um, so Laura, I can I can sort of start this one if, if that helps. Um, I think it's 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 both at the moment. So travel restrictions are obviously in place um, globally, and it, it, you know you need to keep an eye on on where those where those are and, and and what implications they have. But we're also seeing restrictions around visas. So for instance, in Singapore at the moment. Um, Visa applications for candidates outside of Singapore and who haven't worked here before or who have expired work passes, they are not prioritising those passes at the moment. Um, key workers only, essential workforce, are the only employment passes and work passes that are being approved at this stage. So we anticipate a one to two months, perhaps even three month backlog on work pass applications. And I think that is why we've seen success in creating these opportunities with dual contracts where people can onboard in the country in which they're currently based uh, with a view to getting the work pass uh, approval um, in principle later down the line when these restrictions are lifted on work passes and approvals. Yeah, and I guess my only um, uh, a couple of points from, from me, I guess it goes back to one of the points that I made earlier, and um, that there are businesses that are still recruiting at the moment. They're interviewing with the view to offer somebody um, the, the role um, uh, with the view that they will just give them a to-be-confirmed start date. And that, that it's only to be confirmed, obviously, because of the, the travel, but also because of the, the situation with visas as well. Um, from a contract perspective, um, certainly ones that I'm working with in New Zealand at the moment, um, they are able to have people start remotely from their home country um, and, and you can start work without a, a New Zealand uh, working permit. Um, we've partnered with an accountancy firm that are able to um, pay the, the successful contractor into their local bank account. So a visa for the time being is not necessary. Um, but this may be different in different countries, um, but, but but so far I've not seen any issues from the contract perspective. So that concludes today's webinar. Um, thank you to our presenters, Laura and Harriet, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. If we've been able to unable to answer your question during the session, um, we'll contact you directly with an answer to your query. Over the next couple of days, um, keep an eye out on our LinkedIn page for a direct link to today's recording. And please be sure to fill out our short feedback survey, which will be heading into your inboxes over the next few days. That's it from me. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope to see you again very soon.